Well, it all came together, first of all, because Marcus is a world-class talent. I mean, God blessed him with a tremendous ability to drive a race cars. Uh, we first met in Indianapolis uh, four years ago. He just walked up to me in a Ford suite and introduced himself, and we started talking, had a pleasant chat for about a half hour. I was not a V8 supercar fan, I'm ashamed to say, so uh, I did not know who Marcus was at the time. I went back to my motorhome, looked him up on the internet, and realized that he was a great talent and one of the world-class drivers. So uh, obviously the next time I spoke to him, we, we talked a little bit more business than we did the first time, but uh, just just uh, he was bold enough to walk up and introduce himself, and, uh, and we took it from there. I see a lot of people come from other forms of racing and try NASCAR and they go away unhappy. Uh, for Marcus, we really sat down and talked about a five-year plan that we're executing. Uh, first, we brought him over to test. Out there on a racetrack by himself, does he have speed? Does he have a feel for the car? Uh, he passed that test, so we talked about him moving over here and starting at really the lower ranks of NASCAR. We see that number 20 of Marcus Ambrose is being his first ever pole in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Sure been fun, guys, watching him get up to the front of these packs in that number 20 Australia truck because Marcus Ambrose is learning in a hurry. Because I started also at a fairly low level, I mean, the truck series is not the same level as V8 Supercar is. And so, you know, I'd gone backwards a few notches and knew how far I had to climb, but I knew that the end goal was worthwhile and, and was just very persistent and didn't, you know, I was worried, you know, I was worried, hey, I'm crashing these cars, how many more races is, is this team going to give me before they, they tell me to take a hike? And so it was a difficult time, but, uh, you know, those are the times that really make the good times even better. You know, trucks are a little easier to handle. They got the long beds on them, a lot of side force, and uh, very close side-by-side -side racing, so it was a good place for him to cut his teeth. Uh, once he proved that he could do that, had several poles, uh, ran up front quite a bit. We said, okay, let's take it to the next level, which is the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Uh, in Nationwide for two years, he was racing every weekend against cup regulars, really cutting his teeth and seeing how he measured up and driving cars that handle a little bit closer to the cup cars. Uh, so we really made sure he went to every racetrack two or three times between testing and racing. We made sure he was in there against the best competition before we took the step to cup. So it's part of a plan. We really are pleased with his progress at the beginning of this cup season. He's doing uh, way exceeding expectations. And, uh, but we fully expect by the end of this five-year plan for him to be a, a force to be reckoned with and, and running up front and winning races. I'm a proud Australian first off, and you know I'm proud Tasmanian too, and I love my country, I, I love our culture and way of life, but you know, until I really got to Daytona week when everyone started talking about, hey, you're the first Australian in it, it just never even crossed my mind, because um, I just feel like I'm one of 43 guys out there trying to compete, and, and that I'm not really boxed in as a, an Australian, I'm boxed in as a, as a racing driver in the 500, and we're in you know the biggest stage in American racing, it was it was fun, um, but it soon left my mind as soon as I put my helmet on and had to switch into race mode. I've been lucky enough. I've had the same team owners my entire NASCAR career so far. Tad and Jody Schechter have been very loyal to me, and I've driven for them in the trucks, Nationwide Series, and now the Sprint Cup Series. Now the form and the associations that we had and the way the team was set up was different. Um, JTG is a marketing company as well as a race team. So the marketing company bring in the dollars and, and they put that to their best program that they can put together. Whether it be their own team, whether it be taking that sponsorship and, and me as a driver and a crew chief and a few other key people into another group. Now to get to Sprint Cup racing, it was a big jump. I mean, you're talking from a $4 million budget to a $15 million budget. And so all our money went into running the car. I mean, there was a lot that needed to be put together and we just didn't have the resources to throw at it. And so our only real option was to, to join in with an existing cup operation. And so we've been able to, to allow Michael Waltrip Racing to stay as a three car team and have all that continuity with their people and infrastructure in place. And we've been able to get a benefit from that by getting immediate success for performance. 
in this series, there are no data systems on the car. So a driver's feedback is crucial to how you get the best out of the car and the driver uh, over a race weekend. One of the best assets of Marcus, in addition to the fact that he's a great racing driver, is his ability to verbalize what's going on with the car to explain to us how the car feels. In his words, he doesn't need to be technical about it, um, but he just explains very clearly and very precisely. It's almost as if he's been pre-programmed to, to deliver this on a regular basis when the car stops. It really does help us tremendously. I rely on instinct and reaction rather than planning and, and, and being prepared, you know? And, uh, and so when I get in those really intense, difficult situations where it's a brain strain, you know, I just turn the brain off and just, just go on instinct and that tends to work out pretty well most of the time. His feedback is, is incredible, he gives great feedback, he has very good feel for what the car does and um, in our series where we don't have a lot of instrumentation or data coming from the car, we rely very heavily on, uh, on what the driver says about the car uh, and what we need to do to make it go faster. Scott Pruitt getting all kinds of pressure here. Ambrose going to try him for the lead. Here he is inside. Nice move, Marcus Ambrose. I'm getting more confidence when I start hitting these tracks the second time with setups that I already know. With experience that we've already gained, I expect to then jump again. So I think we're on track. I'm showing more speed than last year. I'm showing more maturity as a driver than last year. I'm finishing races. I'm passing cars. Um, we're in the middle of it, you know, and, and that's what I wanted to start this year. I didn't want to be 35th and struggling to get into the pack. We're in the pack now, passing cars, mixing it up. It's a good feeling to have that, and, and we've got more to go, but I think we're on track. You know, with truck, nationwide, and, and Cup, you know, you're only looking at at the most 50 teams per group. So that's 150 drivers. Um, but there's only 50 that make it to Cup. So, and there's 100, 200,000 racers that are trying to get there. And for him to make it and to run well and do well, and I mean, everybody's looking at him now, you know, how much talent and desire he has to do this. And, you know, the people at the racetrack are realizing how much talent he really does have.